Hello and welcome to this edition of FYI Weekly, your official source for the latest news and information from the City of Greensboro. The City of Greensboro has contracted Hydrostructures PA to perform sewer line smoke testing in various locations throughout the city. The project is expected to last a couple of weeks. Work will take place in the areas near and around the vicinity of Phillips Avenue, White Street and Huffine Mill Road. During the testing, smoke will be introduced into manholes, eventually flowing into the sewer lines. Any open break in a sewer line will be identified by the presence of smoke. The smoke is non-toxic, non-staining, white to gray in color, has a slight odor and creates no fire hazard. Customers are advised to pour a gallon of water into each sink, tub and floor drain that is not used on a daily basis. This will fill the P-traps and ultimately prevent smoke from entering into the building. Additional updates on the project will be issued by the City's Water Resources Department as testing progresses. Anyone driving through the testing location sites may experience some minor traffic delays. For more information, call the City's Contact Center at 336-373-2489. In support of National Money Smart Week 2019, the Greensboro Public Library will offer two free workshops to help you make the most of your money. One session is called What Are Cryptocurrencies? The class will take place on Tuesday, April 2nd from 5 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. The other workshop is in the Investing in Education Seminar. The class will meet on Wednesday, April 3rd from 5.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Both events will be hosted downtown at the Central Library. The first workshop will feature representatives from AARP and the North Carolina Secretary of State Securities Division who will offer insights on cryptocurrencies and ways to protect yourself from fraud. The second workshop will feature the North Carolina Better Investing Chapter who will offer advice on the benefits of investing, how to find groups interested in investing, plus information and educational resources to help you succeed. The Central Library is located at 219 North Church Street. Summer will be here before you know it, which means summer camps are accepting registrations and require camp counselors to coordinate activities. Teenagers have until May 1st to apply for the Counselor in Training or CIT program. They will be assigned to a Greensboro Parks and Recreation Summer Camp location. Students can apply online and the training costs $80. Applicants must be 15 years old by June 1st to qualify to participate. The CIT program offers teens a chance to acquire work experience, gain service learning hours and leadership skills at one of Parks and Recreation's summer camp locations. Work sites will include community recreation centers, Greensboro Sportsplex and Camp Joy. Teens must attend a mandatory training session in June and commit to one full session at their designated camp. Guilford County School students who fill out the necessary paperwork may count these hours towards their service learning diplomas. For more information, contact Program Coordinator Alex Zaleski at 336-373-7507. In an effort to help each of us improve our quality of life, the city has partnered with Cone Health for a series of brief and informative videos designed to inspire you to make better choices when it comes to healthy living. Let's check in with our friends at Cone Health for today's news for your health. 70% of Americans are overweight, and the majority of them have health issues that would improve with weight loss. So how do you know if your weight is affecting your health? The easiest way is to calculate out your BMI, or your body mass index. You can do that by going online and entering in your height and your weight. It will give you a number. If that number is 30 or greater, it is likely that your weight is affecting your health. When your BMI is greater than 30, it puts you at much higher risk of things like high blood pressure, high cholesterol, heart disease, stroke, kidney disease, arthritis, cancer, and diabetes. In fact, if your BMI is 30 or greater, um, you have a greater than 300% chance of becoming diabetic. If your BMI is 40, that increased risk goes up to 500%. So if you want to lose weight, the most important thing to start with is to calculate out your resting metabolic rate. That's what most people consider their metabolism, and it tells us how many calories you need to keep your weight the same with a low level of activity. 
The best way to do that is to take your weight and multiply by 9 if you're a woman and 11 if you're a man. Now that we've calculated out your resting metabolic rate, it's time to figure out how many calories you need in order to lose weight. If you cut 500 calories per day from your resting metabolic rate, you lose approximately one pound of fat per week. If you think one pound a week isn't significant, you should know that a pound of fat is about the size of a small grapefruit. So losing a grapefruit of fat every week isn't too shabby. Exercising while losing weight is important in order to prevent your metabolism from falling while you're losing weight. Studies show that just 10 minutes a day of exercise five times a week is enough to cause health benefits. If you increase that exercise to 30 minutes five times a week, you maximize those benefits and you find it much easier in order to keep your weight off. Studies also show that if you exercise more than 30 minutes five times a week, you can increase your hunger. That increase in hunger tends to make you eat more calories than you just burned, which defeats the point of exercise for weight loss. Thank you for joining me. Hopefully these tips will help put you on a path for a healthier future. For more information, go to conehealth.com slash wellness. I'm Dr. Karen Beasley. Don't miss the opportunity to take part in the Great American Cleanup while celebrating Earth Day. We'll have that story and more news coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. The Greensboro Public Library invites the entire community to celebrate Earth Day with free, fun, and educational experiences for the entire family. This year's celebration will take place from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturday, April 6th at the Kathleen Clay Edwards Family Branch Library located at 1420 Price Park Road. Enjoy hands-on nature and eco exhibits, hay rides, a tiny house exhibit, live animals, STEM activities, eco art, alternative vehicles, face painting, nature crafts, and so much more. All activities are free and open to the public. Prior to the Earth Day celebration, Greensboro Beautiful is asking for volunteers to take part in the Great American Cleanup from 9 a.m. to noon at various locations around Greensboro. Individuals, groups, and families are encouraged to show their respect for the environment and our city. To learn more or to sign up as a volunteer, visit the Greensboro Beautiful website. The Pinecroft Sedgefield District will conduct its semi-annual fire hydrant testing throughout the month of April. All hydrants in the Pinecroft Sedgefield Fire District will be tested to ensure they are operating properly and able to produce the required water pressure when needed. This testing also includes all hydrants in the town of Jamestown. Because this testing must be done during regular operating hours, it will be impossible to know in advance just when or where the testing will take place in any specific area. Opening hydrants can sometimes cause a temporary discoloration of water in nearby homes. The discoloration is not harmful in any way and can be cleared up by running the water for a few minutes. This testing ensures the protection of our residents and is also an evaluation indicator used by the North Carolina Response Rating System, which evaluates fire districts according to the protection they offer. Calling all cooks and those who are cooking challenged. The Cald Clue Organic Outreach Garden will present springtime cooking. This is an interactive tasting and demonstration taking place on Tuesday, April 9th from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. at the Cald Clue Multicultural Arts Center. Admission is free with a suggested donation of $5. Space is limited, so make a reservation today by calling Jordan Fowler. The class will be taught by Jordan, who is a gardener at Called Clues Organic Outreach Garden. All produce will come from the garden or Greensboro Farmers Curb Market. Donations enable City Arts to provide quality educational classes throughout the year. The Called Clue Multicultural Arts Center is located at 1700 Orchard Street. In an effort to spotlight and celebrate local artists, business owners, community builders, and essentially the next generation of leaders, the city is proud to partner with Action Greensboro to introduce our Made in Greensboro series. This day, we place the spotlight on Christina Fuller, the artist behind the art of the taco.
Christina Fuller co-owned a fine dining restaurant, The Bistro at Adams Farm, with her mother, but she loved creating off-the-wall taco appetizers. That's how Crafted, the Art of the Taco, was born. It's a place she is still trying creative combos like the big truck, a tender pulled pork and mac and cheese taco she threw together one day when she was hungry and those were the only two things ready in the restaurant. And now Christina's got another baby, her newest restaurant, Crafted, the Art of Street Food. It's got a rotating menu of small plates from around the world. They're all spicy, hot and delicious. If she had to put a name to it, Christina would call her food globally inspired with a nod to her southern roots as every dish seems to be a perfect balance between sweet, savory and spicy. To learn more about Made in Greensboro or to see more images taken by photographers Jerry Walford and Scott Mothersbaugh, visit the Action Greensboro website at madeingso.com. The city's Neighborhood Development Department is partnering with the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development to offer free classes and certification to landlords and homeowners. Coming up after the break, we'll tell you how the two agencies are working to make our homes safer. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. Lead abatement, pest control, and home repairs are just a few of the topics that will be covered at a free series of community classes offered by Housing and Urban Development, also known as HUD. Joining me now to tell us about the upcoming Making Homes Safer event is Jody Moses. She is the HUD North Carolina Field Office Director. Hello, Jody. Welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. We're so glad to have you and this event and what it will mean to our community. So tell me, why are you hosting Make Homes Safer and what do you hope people take away from this event? Yeah, thank you. Um, this event, we're really hosting it for um, multi-pronged or multi several reasons. Um, the first is to drive participation in the City of Greensboro's lead-based paint and home rehabilitation programs, um, essentially to get the word out to homeowners, landlords, investors, property owners, um, people in the real estate industry, that there is grant funding available from the City of Greensboro to um, abate lead in homes and make homes safer. And um, that's one prong, if you will. It's also to um, provide economic opportunity here in Greensboro by offering free certification courses mm -hmm. for contractors and people in the um, home rehabilitation um, sure. trade. Okay, and that's a great opportunity as we have homes that are probably built in the 70s. I guess that's what you target for the lead portion and then needing people who are certified to remove all of that. Yes, that's correct. Um, homes built before 1978. It does not have to be a single family home um, to qualify for this program, mm -hmm. by the way. That's important to mention. Um, you can be an investor and have multi-unit properties okay. that you would like to do, some or all of the units. Um, and ultimately, you know, making homes safer. The end goal is that we have families living in safe, yes. safer homes here in Greensboro. Absolutely. So considering <laughs> all of the sectors that you're reaching out to, tell me about the partnerships involved in sponsoring an event like this. Yes. Um, the City of Greensboro's lead-based paint program, or the City of Greensboro, is a HUD grantee um, through our Healthy Homes Grant Program. And so um, we have partnered with the City of Greensboro as a grantee to kind of put on this event, um, drive participation, and just reach out. Along with the city and HUD, we have other partners to include UNCG, North Carolina Housing Coalition, and several other entities and organizations that are wanting to get involved. Perfect. And when and where will the workshops actually take place, and is there a registration fee? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> the most exciting thing about this is it's free for everyone to include the certification courses. It is at the Greensboro Coliseum in the event center. Okay. It is on April 23rd. It's a one day event other than one of the certification courses is a two day, but it's April 23rd, 8 a.m. Um, goes into the evening at 7.30, 
not everybody has to stay until 730, right. but there's a homeowner track in the evening. So um, April 23rd at the Coliseum. Okay, and free. That's the yeah, operative free. word. Yeah, free. Did I mention free? <laughs> yes. Now, you kind of touched on who you're hoping will be part of this. So tell us again, who are you encouraging to attend Making Homes Safer? Yes, um, we have actually broken this event into tracks, if you will, or kind of three buckets of attendees. Um, I'll start with the certification courses. That would be for contractors, um, students that are getting, um, I know at GTCC, for example, they have a course on property maintenance and property preservation. Um, to come and participate in these certification courses and get certified as a to identify and abate lead-based paint. We also have a home ownership component that'll be that evening. That is for current homeowners because there's going to be a home maintenance piece to that. And there's also for future, or maybe you're thinking about buying a home now or you'd like to in the future. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a housing counseling agency that'll be there to walk potential or future home buyers through the process. Okay. And then the other um, bucket of attendees, if you will, or those we really think will have value add and takeaway is um, real estate professionals, um, property inspectors, property managers, mm -hmm. homeowners, investors, developers, things like that that are okay. kind of in the business of sure. apartments and renting okay. um, because they can learn how they may qualify for up to $30,000 for a single family home grant, not loan, and up to $9,500 per unit in a multi-unit for um, healthy home rehabilitation, okay. lead-based paint abatement. Well, considering grants do not have to be paid back as opposed to a loan, which right. you do pay back, it's important people know how to get involved in this. So you've t told us each group, um, where do they register? How can they get more information? Yes, thank you for asking that, for sure. Um, registration is open. They can go to our website. Our website has all of the sessions listed and they're kind of organized by track, but it's important to note when you go to the website to register, you can register for any session you want, um, any track, you don't have to stick to one track. So go to our website, and if you just want more information, they can also dial 336-373-2349. Okay, well thank you, Jody, for partnering with the city and giving us the overview of making homes safer. I'm sure this is going to be a great success, and we hope a lot of folks come out and take advantage of these opportunities. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Stay tuned for a little-known fact about Greensboro as we tell you something about the city. That's coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. One way to stay informed about what's happening in the city is by attending or tuning in to city council meetings. The Greensboro City Council meetings are open to the public, but if you cannot attend, we broadcast the meetings live right here on GTN. We also stream the meetings live on the city's website. Council meetings take place at 5.30 p.m. on the first and third Tuesdays of the month on Level 2 of the Melvin Municipal Office Building located at 300 West Washington Street. The first meeting of the month includes public comments and special presentations. Meetings on the third Tuesday of the month focus on public hearings and city business. The fourth Tuesday is reserved for a meeting as needed. To review the council meeting schedule and agendas, please visit the city's website. Here's an opportunity to learn a little something about the city. Tickets are on sale for the Universal Circus, which is hailed as America's number one circus. It comes at you like a high-speed roller coaster. It's a once-in-a-lifetime, thrill-a-minute spectacle of sight, sound, and soul for the entire family. Celebrated around the world for spreading a soulful dose of unity, inclusion, and diversity under its red and yellow striped big top, Universal Circus will be at the Greensboro Coliseum the week of August 13th. Universal Circus, now in its 26th year, is loaded with one-of-a-kind performances from around the world, all coming together as one under a single ring big top. Led by ringmaster Lucky from South Africa and his longtime sidekick Zeke, the 2019 edition of Universal Circus features contortionist skaters, daredevil motorcyclists, a high-wire act, trampoline acrobats, and many more acts and surprises. 
Coming up after the break, we'll showcase our department spotlight. But first, prepare to mark your calendar for all the great events happening this week on the town. Hey, this is Megan. April showers bring May flowers, and we are here to bring you all the latest on what's happening around the town this weekend. This Friday, downtown is going to be hopping with lots of fun First Friday events. Let the hospitality of downtown merchants and artists inspire you as you enjoy a variety of local art and entertainment. For a list of events happening during First Friday, including live music at Green Hill and discounted admission at the Greensboro Children's Museum, visit firstfridaygreensboro.org. While you're downtown on Friday, stop by Scuppernong Books for the Planet GSO pop-up. Learn more about this multi-phase process and share your ideas for Greensboro's future. This will help city staff create a new comprehensive plan which will guide the future actions of our community. Share your vision for a better Greensboro. Find more details on this and a full list of upcoming city-sponsored events at greensboro-nc.gov slash planetgso. The Drama Center's Children's Theater presents the musical Junie B. Jones Jr. at 7.30 p.m. on Friday at the Odell Auditorium at Greensboro College. The show is an adaptation of the popular Barbara Park children's books featuring Junie B. Jones, a plucky young girl navigating the challenges of first grade. With a cast of 34 children, the show has a lot of humor, lively tunes, and it's appropriate for all ages. For more information, including additional showtimes on Saturday and Sunday, visit thedramacenter.com. Check out the Dogs on the Catwalk fundraiser this Saturday from 6.30 to 9.30 p.m. at Cadillac Service Garage. This annual affair is a canine fashion show and silent auction with all money raised used to help pay for the associated expenses and medical costs of rehoming and rehabilitating local animals. Purchase your tickets online at reddogfarm.com. Last but not least, the 8th Annual Gate City Minority Business Opportunity Fair will take place April 25th from 4 to 7 p.m. at the Khalif Event Center. This networking event is free and open to minority and women-owned businesses interested in pursuing contracting opportunities with local public institutions, government agencies, and major private companies. For more information or to register, visit eventbrite.com. Keep watching FYI Weekly right here on GTN to find out more about events happening on the town. Welcome back. The City of Greensboro has more than 20 departments and several divisions committed to serving you, our residents and visitors. Let's go behind the scenes in our department spotlight. Today we place the spotlight on the Greensboro Parks and Recreation Department. An interactive outdoor classroom and tree preserve is being built at Brightwood Park. With a trail and nature playground, this is made possible in part to a $30,000 grant awarded by the National Recreation and Parks Association and the Walt Disney Company. The grant is one of 25 distributed to communities nationwide as part of a Meet Me at the Park campaign where park and recreation staff were invited to share their best ideas on increasing access to inclusive play spaces for children and families living in underserved communities. Agencies with the most innovative, scalable, and impactful project ideas receive grants to build their projects. The city is using the money to partially fund an outdoor exploration and learning environment at Brightwood Park, which consists of 13 wooded acres in northeast Greensboro. The project, designed with input from residents, will include a 6,000-square-foot nature play area with amenities such as tree balance beams, adventure logs, and even musical instruments. Straight ahead on the other side of the break is this week's Way to Go GSO shout-out. Stay with us. As we draw to a close, we always want to end on a positive note with our Way to Go GSO shout-out. This week's shout-out goes to the Budget and Evaluation Department. 
Staff received the Distinguished Budget Presentation Award for its 2018-2019 budget. This is presented by the Government Finance Officers Association. The award represents a significant achievement for the City of Greensboro. It reflects the commitment by staff to meet the highest principles of governmental budgeting. In order to receive the budget award, Greensboro had to satisfy nationally recognized guidelines for effective budget presentation. These guidelines are designed to assess how well the city's budget serves as a policy document, a financial plan, an operations guide, and a communications tool. Budget documents must be rated proficient in all four categories and in the 14 mandatory criteria within those categories in order to receive the award. That concludes this edition of FYI Weekly, but you can easily stay connected to the latest city news by linking to us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Be sure to download our weekly podcast, Talk City Greensboro. For all of us here at the City of Greensboro, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.